a young man stands in his stands hands and his pants stand sands and his young man pants and man sands hook hands land man stands and his young hands and his sands his sand sands pants sands man and young man hands stands at young sands his stand sands his man dance young sand sand land sand sands man's a young land a land sands man's can man in his stand hands and land man land man sand man hand man man young man man land man clan man sand sass last sand sass is his sis sass sauce sass sauce sus is when the imposter okay try again your name is john the date is 14th the time is 14th F sorry oh uh, that says oh it says 413th okay uh your name is john the date is 413 the time is 413 the era is 413 the universe is 413. Your age is 413. As was previously mentioned, it is your 413. A number of 413s are scattered about your introduction. You have had enough. You have a hatred for 413s. You'd like to stop this, but you are not very good at it. What will you do? John, quickly retrieve arms from drawer. Fuck yeah. John. Read note on drawer. Son. Son, you have come so far. You can let me go now. I am so proud of you. This note is rich with the aromas of dad and hat and pipe and home. It's glorious. Exactly what you wanted. The old man really came through this time. John, place imposter in your strife specibus. That little fella? That little fella? Oh right, you dropped it somewhere. Maybe you didn't think it was literally there, instead of being an actual manifestation of your among sus agitations. Of your amogus sus agitations. Instead of being an actual manifestation of your amogus sus agitations. Fuck, the last thing you need is a loose imposter in your room. No, scratch that. The last thing you need is an imposter in your specimus. A traitor like that is very dangerous, not to mention a little sus. Additionally, isn't this happening in 2009? Among Us came out in 2018, so there's no way this makes any chronological sense. There's no way this can go on, right? Right? Please? Right? Yeah, right. John, go open your magic chest. Yeah, you'll go open your magic chest right away. What could go wrong? You see nothing wrong here. Haha, <laughs> nice idea, dunk ass. Can't you see there's a cake on top of your magic chest? You can't possibly hope to move it in any way. I guess this is game over for you, loser. Well, unless... S. Remove cake. Hi there, I'm John's Colonel Sprite. Seems like John needs some help. Don't worry, I'm here to help. But I can't do it alone. I need someone else with me. Hey, wouldn't you like to help John? Come on, let's help John. Helping John is easy. All you need to do is move the cake. Grab the cake by clicking it. chest already. Okay, here we go. Wonder what's in there. Just some magic equipment and funny items, right? 
perhaps. Or maybe some dark secret you've been hiding from anyone. Or maybe some dark secret you've been hiding from everyone. The implications would be unimaginable. Maybe it's just empty. You fool! Your magic is escaping! What did you think was in there? It was a magic chest, after all, for storing your magic! This was a grave mistake! Wait, no, this is actually kind of nice. The wind blows through you. The gust cuts into the hollow, gaping voids within, thrumming that familiar ache. It hasn't gone anywhere in these long years, perhaps just gotten stronger. Strangely, you are not a day older than you, what you were. Strangely, you are not a day older than what you were back then. Time is a speck of dust in the wind, or like an imposter on the loose. It is your thirteenth birthday, as it has been so many times before. It is an infernal cycle, a silly and cruel game you play, day in, day out. It is a game you cannot escape, because as much as it needs you, you also need it. They say not to bite the hand that feeds you, but no meal will ever sate you. Cake, meat, candy, pumpkin, hams, Doritos, fries, burger, all of it turns into bitter, all of it turns into bitter ash in your mouth. The magic wind juice is no better. It's all like pearls before swine. Maybe. You don't actually know what that idiot means. At least you can enjoy the fireworks. And by fireworks, you mean the magical shiny pollen or whatever is blowing out of this chest. It's kind of cool, which makes you feel a little... It's kind of cool, which makes you feel a little... It... It's kind of cool. It's kind of cool, which makes you feel a little better. Reminds you of Serenity and the other fireflies, some of which totally got lost into the void at some point. C'est la vie, little motherfuckers. You would not believe your eyes if ten million fireflies lit up the world as I fell asleep. Robert Frost. Yep, that's it, you think. You nailed the intro or whatever. Yeah, baby, here we go. Nah, nope. It's total horseshit. John, close the chest. That's enough. It was cool, though you lost some of your magic. That's nothing to worry about, as you have a lot of it, but having loose magic around is always a risk. You hope the magic finds a good home somewhere. Let's move on with the show. You had a whole cake on the chest, and it's somehow on the bed now. Say, that cake looks really good right now. You haven't had cake in ages. The cake's right there, and it's all yours. Go ahead, champ. John, eat cake. Fuck. John, be cake. Now that's just plain silly. John, ask the walls how they are doing. The walls don't speak. Not to you. They never have. Their whispers echo across a time scale larger than yours. The walls stood... The walls stood here before you, and they will stand here after you, no matter what happens. They will always be back, to hold you in. The posters on the walls do speak to you. Their lies are comforting. You've tried to look behind them, but they won't let you. Still, you regard them fondly. John, examine Con Air poster. Mimosas, cag, junk, cask, and malcohol in con air, john air, sun air, also bunny in a funny box, he he hoo hoo. John, use blood magic and problem sleuth poster to make problem sleuth real. Um, how about no? First off, your aspect is breath, not blood, so you can't perform blood magic. Secondly, if you wanted to make Problem Sleuth real, you'd use candy corn <laughs> You'd use candy corn and ink. Using blood would instead manifest Bloody Sleuth, the one whom God forgot. And he wouldn't be satisfied with only some of your blood. 
He would want all of it. He'd want all of it. John, examine calendar. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Calendar? Some dumb fucking edgy fan cherub or something? Some dumb fucking edgy fan cherub or something? You're just a dirty homestuck, aren't you? John, find that imposter. You could do that, and spend the next 250 pages on an Among Us journey, doing tasks, sitting at security, and being sus near events. You aren't sure that you'd want the plot to be about that, though. Maybe you should wait and see if anything more intriguing presents itself. Oh hey, look at that. John, examine Dave's message. Oh, hell yeah. Dave Strider, one of your best chums. He's your buddy, your pal, a friend. You can never go wrong with some Dave, or as a real Dave... <laughs> or as a real Dave Aficionado would call him, turn tech godhead. He's always had your back, every step of the way. John, open pester chum. Fuck, I'll have to delete that. John, open pester chum. Here we go, one sick chat coming up with your totally awesome bud, Dave motherfucking Strider, coming right up. Here it comes, oh yeah. This better be worth the build-up, which it totally is, because it's Dave Strider and nobody else. Yeah. This might be coming across as sarcastic or inauthentic, which it isn't. It's just that I'm clarifying that we truly have a Dave Strider here, for fucking real. So what are you waiting for? Just go on to the next page, yeah? John. Dave. Now. Turn tech godhead, TG, began pu began pestering ectobiologist, EB, at sixteen thirty at sixteen thirteen. Hey, so what sort of insane lol did you roar? I got a little apple monster, it's so funny. I'm gonna juice it today. Oh hell. That's fucking Christmas. But John. Hey. What's up, my good bro? I'm dying, John. It's terminal. Are you? Yeah. I'm in the ho-ho-ho. I'm in the hospital. This is my last goodbye. Bro, this is a joke. This is a game. We both know it. No, I'm gonna slam it. This is it. That's the apples. No! Hold on, Dave. I'm coming. S. John. Run like the wind. Be in Texas. Surprise, numbnuts. You already are. It's so gray and dry here. How could Dave even live here? Wait, he's dying, so you guess he couldn't. Maybe you should get him out of here. You need to get to the hospital. John. Locate the hospital. There it is. Now that was easy. It's like nothing could go wrong. Holy fucking shit, what? Dave! John, mourn for Dave. You can't believe it. Dave is gone, just like that. Blown up into little bits. You can't even gather them and scoop them into a sprite, or rebuild them into some kind of Dave bot. He's just gone. Your best bro is dead, for good. It's impossible for you to process. John, be interrupted. Hey, kid. You can't just be standing here like that. I'm working here. But, but why? That hospital was violating the Geneva Conventions. You know, the one with the Red Cross. So we had no other option than to demolish the whole building. Oh. 
So it was empty? No. Thousands are dead. Just kidding. There's the new better hospital. There's the new better hospital. John, enter hospital. John, talk to Dave. Hey Dave. John, you came. Of course I did. You're my best bro after all. <laughs> of course you'd come here. You just like that, Egbert. But I'm not going to be your bro for much longer. John, I want you to forget me. There are a lot of good bros out there. It's too late for me. No, I'm not giving you up. There might be a fuck ton of other bros out there, but I don't give a shit about them. Because you're my friend, Dave. And I'm not giving up on a friend. John, this is touching at all, but I'm literally dying over here. Unless you're a doctor, I don't think you can actually help me. John, take this. I want you to have my specibus. Dave, I can't take this. I won't have any use for it anymore. If I need to strife in the afterlife, I'll just rap battle. I'll drop some sick bars and defeat God. Then I'll, then I'll be an actual rap god. I can dream, right? I guess, Dave. God, I feel like a sickly Victorian child. You're sitting there, and I'm just here rambling about my near-death delusions. Fuck. I don't think this is how I'd go. I always thought a cool dude like me would at least get something a little more rad. I always thought a cool dude like me would at least get something a little more rad. Well, damn. Tough audience. Sorry, Dave. This is just kind of depressing. Yeah. If you don't mind, I'd take a nap now. This illness is beating the shit out of me. <sighs> okay. See you, Dave. Later. John, talk to Doctor again, but so that the readers can hear too. Hey, Doc. What's wrong with my friend Dave? I'm sorry, kid. He's got ligma. John, ask the question. What's ligma? It's short for ligmatopy. It's short for ligma. It's short for ligmatopy. It's a disease in which the body fails. Fails to what? It just fails, and then the patient dies. It's a very difficult disease. There's no official cure for it. There's nothing I can do. I'm sorry. No. No! Is there really nothing that can be done? You said there's no official cure. What about an unofficial one? Listen, kid. You didn't hear this from me, but there is a cure. But the ingre- There is a cure. There is a cure but the ingredients for it are almost impossible to gather. Even attempting to do so may tear apart the fabric of reality. I'll do it! You seem like a good kid. If you really want to save your friend that much, I'll give you a list of what you need. When you have everything on it, come back and I'll make you the cure out of them. But if something bad happens, well, that's on you. You'll have to sort it out by yourself. I can't help you on this quest. I'm just a doctor, after all. John, obtain list. The soul of a cherub, the blood of a demon, the arms of an author, a drop of the sweetest nectar, the crown of the greatest king, the knife of a killer, a dream of a denizen, the heart of a horror terror, and the tears of a universe. An universe. And the tears of an universe. You swear you... You swear you'll get every item on this goddamn list, even if it's the last thing you do. John, begin quest. Sure, go ahead with that. You really have no idea where to even begin with this list. Well, you might have some idea, but you're not sure how to get started with all of this. Should you assemble a team, 
an almighty task force of suburbs' greatest heroes, use the magic from your chest, go god-tier and use your breath powers, some other equally if not more ridiculous shit? You really don't know. At, at least it's better to have too many ideas than none, you guess. Only if you'd known someone... If only you'd known someone who'd know what to... If only you'd known someone who would know someone smart... What? Only if you'd know someone who would know someone smart who'd know what to do. Only if you'd know someone who would know someone smart who'd know what to do. But you do know someone smart. And that's your friend Rose Lalonde. She'd surely know what to do. John. Talk to Rose. Fucking mug. Easier said than done. You can't really pester her from here. You could go back to your home, or even go to see her in person. Both of those are hike and a half, though, and crossed like half of the US in like 8 seconds almost 20 pages ago. And you crossed like half of the US in 8 seconds like 20... P Both of those are hike and a half, though. And you crossed like half of the US in 8 seconds almost 20 pages ago. That's not even enough for the fast travel ability to reset. You're stuck here for the time being. You're stuck here for the time being. You try to think about how to... You try to think about how to get to Rose, but your thoughts seem to be clouded by a dark veil of shadows. John. Think harder. Nope. Nope. Nothing. The veil of darkness seems impenetrable. Maybe if you jog your noggin a little more. John. Harder. Huh. Looks like you really can't think about Rose. Like, not at all. But it seems like you're getting closer to something here. John. Harder! Oh. Uh... You mean, uh-oh? You kind of got lost in your thoughts here. It's kind of dark here. It's ridiculously hard to see. Is there a light switch? Are you stuck here now? Oops. John. John, I am so fucking crunk. Rose? You seem older. Sound? Read? This doesn't make sense. How are we talking? The seer has her ways. Wonk. Uh, where are you? Where is anyone? What is this, Plyalis? Is this where we end up after everything? After canon? After fanon? When every outcome has already been exploited, there's nothing left but a sick joke. Every pillar, every struct has been eroded to nothing. Potential is infinite here. But... But? But! <laughs> As anything can happen at any time, regardless of any truth is has, there is none continuity. Everything is pointyless. Except it's not. Everything that has ever happened still haunts us. It's an anti... It's an personal hell. Um, really? Yes. 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 That's why every guy you've met looks like your dad. They've looked like my dad? Have they not? I don't know. Sometimes guys look like dads and that's okay, but I don't think they are my dad in any way. I'm not sure it works like that, Rose. Maybe. My baby, I'm all wrong. That can happen too. Because nothing matters anymore. Rose? Did you know Dave is dying? Yes. Of course. Then why aren't you doing anything? He'll be alright. Really? Yeah, maybe. Look, John, you've gathered a good amount of continuity so far. Things have happened, one after another. But things to actually matter, there has to be a structure. If anything can happen, you could say, 
rearrange the words in the paper using MS Paint to get more easily to get more easily achievable ingredients, or perhaps God tier for absolutely no reason whatsoever. What the hell? See, John, you could just save Dave. But if the only real thing that has happened to you since the beginning of your adventure was meaningless, would any of it have any weight? Or would it be only a fleeting misadventure in an ever-expanding ocean of inanity? Um, I would like to save Dave is the thing. I know. You have two choices. You can save Dave, or you can save Dave. You don't have to choose right now. If you choose the hard way, find me. Not me, me. Another me. You aren't strong enough for your quest as you are now. You'll need to find Mount Prospit. She'll give you something you need. See you later, John. John. Wake up? John. Contemplate what Rose said. You generally... You genuinely don't seem to have any idea what to choose. Perhaps the idea of what old Rose was trying to say to you is a bit... <sighs> was trying to say to you is a little bit too much for you to process. Or perhaps you're wholly unwilling to do so, if such choices aren't... If such choices weren't what you expected from your adventure. But having to... But having the choice between saving Dave and saving Dave... You decide to continue saving Dave the You decide to continue saving Dave the way the really kind and fatherly doctor instructed you to. Which apparently involves meeting a different Rose. You know where to find her, but it appears your fast travel ability cooldown is about fifty pages, which seems absolutely preposterous to you. John. Go to Rose. You guess you'll be going to New York the old fashioned way. Let's go. Yeehaw. Giddy up. This is genuinely awful. Oh, there's someone standing. Oh, there's someone standing right there. You wonder if this stranger is as helpful as robotic. And if the stranger is. And if the stranger is indeed as helpful robotic stranger. And if this stranger is indeed a helpful robotic stranger. You wonder if they'd use their very helpful robotic legs to carry you all the way to Rose's home. John. Approach the robotic stranger. Darkbot. Psst. Hey, kid. Hmm? Yeah, you there. Wanna learn how to rocket jump? John. Oh, hell yes. Oh, hell yes. Wait, no. That sounds incredibly dangerous. Oh, kid, what are you so afraid of? Injury? Dismemberment? Death? Come on, kid. What's your name? John? You look like a John. Um, you're right. I'm John. Okay, John. You look like you're a long way from home. You don't seem particularly stuck, either. You going somewhere? I'm on my way to see my friend Rose. Of course. Naturally. No, kid. You know, kid. I'm feeling somewhat generous. I'm gonna give you a ride. You get to see your friend Rose, and I get... And I can show you that rocket jumping ain't so bad after all. Just hop on my back, and we're off. What'd you say, kid? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know you, and if I'm being honest, you're kind of sketchy. I really need to go see... I really need to go see my friend, though. So okay, I'm gonna rocket jump with you, but just this once. What a splendid choice, John. S. John. Rocket jump.
All right, kid, here we are. We've learned a lesson today, haven't we? Uh, what? What? Ah, John, John, John. Never rocket jump with strangers. Never rocket jump with strangers. Oh man, was that a test of some kind? Sort of. Sort of. Sort of. You've still got a lot to learn, John. I still have a third lesson for you, but you're gonna have to wait for that. Wait, what was the first one? Maybe you'll get to know that someday, kid. Maybe you will. Now get going. We're almost there. John, head in. All right, kid, here we are. Rose, Rose, you got company. Rose, meet John. Oh, John, I'm coming down. You're already here. Once I heard you were looking for me, I was thinking about sending Dark to get you. Seems he was faster than I anticipated. You two know each other? Yes, we have known each other for my whole life. How didn't I know that? Well, I'm not sure if the other Rose explained it to you. But things are not quite the way you think they are. I'm sure you've noticed. Yeah, sorta. Man, Dark got me really... Yeah, sorta. Man, Dark got me really good. And I thought I was the best prankster around. Hey kid, don't let it get you. Sometimes you just get owned like a massive chunk. That's life. Dude. You can go now, Dark. I need to talk with John. Just the two of us. Alright. See you later, kids. Darkbot. Leave. Peace. Darkbot. Fade into the darkness ominously, just to be shady as fuck. John. Talk with Rose. Dark is a weird guy. How'd you meet it? He's been along as he's been around as long as I remember. My mother died when I was very young. Dark has been looking after me ever since. At his best, he's like a father or a brother. At his worst, he is a relentless enemy and a cruel trickster. Not to mention when he fades into darkness ominously like he seems not to mention when he fades into darkness o not to mention when he fades into the darkness ominously like that, he seems shady as fuck. <laughs> wow. I had no idea. I'm so sorry. Somehow I thought your mom was still around. She might be. But in that case, she wouldn't be my mother. I know this is confusing. I know that it is confusing, and that there's a lot that is very unclear. There's too much to explain, so I'll just cut into the essentials. Come with me. In any case, we don't want Dark listening in on us. We don't want him to know what we're planning. Why? What is he? I mean, what is he? I know he's a robot, but where did he come from? How do you know each other? Did your mom build him? Sorry, Rose. I feel like I have a lot of questions. That's all right, John. Rose, explain. Ugh. Okay, I'm done, I think. This is longer than I thought it was going to be. I thought Act 1 was going to be 14 minutes long, and it's already longer than that.